At the end of 2011, a survival map was released that challenged the way we thought about surviving in Minecraft. With limited room to walk and move, and very minimal items to work with, players had infinite ways to approach the situation at hand. This map absolutely dominated the next few months of YouTube search results and had plenty of people playing on their own and with their friends. The more people got involved, the faster people were learning tips and tricks on how to survive on the floating island in the sky. In this video, we're going to be talking about the one map that challenged not only players, but changed the way that future survival maps were handled and made. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So if you were living under a rock at the end of 2011 and for the most part of 2012, there's a chance you missed out on one of the coolest Minecraft maps ever, Skyblock. A survival map created by Minecraft forum user Noob Crew. this was the definitive go-to map for an interesting challenge, survive in the sky. At first glance, the world in front of you probably seemed extremely simple, and almost impossible to properly live off of. Living on an island composed of approximately 80 dirt blocks and one piece of bedrock proved to be quite difficult for many. With a limited amount of resources in the very beginning, your options for starting out were quite straightforward. However, whether or not you would survive on Skyblock could be determined almost immediately after starting the map for the first time, and if you failed the first simple task, you'd have to delete the map and restart or cheat via mods or creative mode. Surviving Skyblock, just like regular Minecraft, is all determined on what your definition of survive is. On Skyblock, death is a regular occurrence, and most of the time, is actually preferred rather than eating or farming to regain hunger and hearts. However, if your definition of survival is to create a thriving and functional flying utopia, then you're probably in the majority here. Upon looking in your chest, you'll find two essential items to your survival, a bucket of lava and a block of ice. These two items, when used together properly, would form a cobblestone generator. And that's only the first part. From this point, you'd then have to obtain the wood from a tree on the island, and then pray that the saplings would drop for you to pick up. If a sapling didn't fall or your cobblestone generator messed up and created obsidian, you'd literally have to restart the world or cheat. These two factors would weigh heavily on the player's mind for the entirety of their skyblock world, and would cause most players to become overprotective of their lava and saplings. If you ran out of saplings, or if your lava turned into obsidian, then your journey was just simply over. If you had good luck, you could create a very well-kept skyblock and would take over your vast space of nothingness with your cobblestone fortress. Wood and cobblestone were the bare bones of your survival on this map. Players would need to create tools, torches, mob spawners, and more. If they got to the second island and received what it had to offer, more opportunities such as creating multiple functioning farms and getting to the nether became available. While it seemed like your options were limited with Skyblock, and while that is in fact partially true, your ways of approaching a situation and getting an outcome were almost always different from another player's. For instance, to get animals to spawn, you needed to keep a block of grass intact so that you could later place dirt beside it so that grass would spread, which is something that many players may have forgotten about. On top of that, players could also accidentally drop or die with items that would forever change what options were available to them. If a player died or accidentally dropped their only red or brown mushroom, they could no longer make mushroom stew, rendering the other mushroom essentially useless. These situations became extremely common among players, causing many to spawn in items after dying or making them quit Skyblock altogether. As per usual with survival maps, the creator included many of his own challenges for the players such as expanding the island, making an infinite water source, obtaining bone meal, and catching fish. While many players ignore these rules and use Skyblock as a medium for testing their ability to survive off of essentially nothing, the 50 challenges set in front of you could definitely keep you entertained if you were up for the challenge. For many, the end goal was to complete all 50 tasks, while for others, they simply wanted to have all the fun that they could before they got bored. Many players got bored of Skyblock because of the associated repetition that ensued. Get cobblestone, use the cobblestone, cut down trees, plant more trees, use the wood, and wait for trees to grow by getting more cobblestone. After a while, it could easily get boring. When you've collected a surplus of resources, you usually no longer felt the risk of walking above nothing, making the survival aspect feel more like a chore. 
The challenge only existed as long as players wanted the challenge to exist. Understandably, the hardest part of Skyblock for many was the beginning. After creating an entire base of operations though, it sometimes felt monotonous walking around your floating island. For many, Skyblock felt like a waiting game. You had to wait for trees to grow, you had to wait until you had enough cobblestone to build whatever you wanted to, you had to wait for animals to spawn, you had to wait for mobs to fall, you just had to wait. That isn't to say that Skyblock was boring though, it just created a new type of challenge for everybody. Us as players tend to forget how well we have it with just regular survival Minecraft. With unlimited resources and a seemingly infinite world to work with, it never seems boring when you're just mining cobblestone. Sitting at a cobblestone generator though, tends to make you wish you had more freedom to move around and explore, rather than watching a block spawn and be broken over and over and over again, with a high chance of not even being picked up before it falls into lava. Skyblock was a great map for its time and inspired many other maps and challenges like it, but it will always stand out for what it offered and gave players in terms of an original experience and enjoyment. So what do you think? Did you ever play Skyblock? Do you think that you could handle all 50 tasks at hand? Do you think that you'll give it a shot if you haven't tried it already? Let me know in the comment section down below. But other than that, that just about does it for now. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like on it because it would really help out myself, Mike, the channel, and the video quite a lot. But anyways guys, I hope you all enjoyed. My name is Ant Venom, and I bid you all farewell. Thanks so much for watching.